So today I'm going to be showing everyone how to jumpstart an IBO battery. And what this means is that a lot of batteries, when they have been not been used for a very long period of time, um, end up discharging past the point that the charger can recognize them. And this actually does not mean that the battery is dead or that the battery needs to be repacked. I know a lot of people take a blinking light on the charger to mean the battery is bad beyond saving and it's time to send it in for a resell, and that is often not the case. Um, the thing is that these batteries can um, drop below the voltage that the charger will recognize normally. If it's too low, the um, charger or the safety measure will not charge the battery. Um, but that does not mean the battery cannot be charged again. And um, the way to do this is that you um, connect the battery with the charger until the light starts blinking and then remove it and then stick it back in the charger and just keep doing this over and over and over again until um, the light stays solid instead of blinking. Um, because each time the battery makes contact with the charger, the charger gives it a little bit of energy and um, and then it stops charging after it realizes um, the battery is too low. But if you keep doing that over and over again, those little bits add up and it actually gets to the point where the charger can recognize it again and the charger will actually start charging it again. And I have actually had batteries that when they arrive um, are blinking, cannot charge at all. The IBO will not boot up with them no matter what. Um, but after jump starting them, I have had them run for over two hours. So your battery can still be very well, very good, and just need a jump start. And I have an IBO here, um, which is a Gold Air S210 that I recently got from Japan. And his battery has been sitting inside him for the past 10 years or so, and will not take a charge at all. The state, the, um, my portable charger here just blinks when I plug it in. So I'm going to be trying to jump it for you guys on camera to show you how to do this. Now it may take anywhere from like two tries to jump it, or it may take 50 tries, so we're gonna find out. And it may not work at all, this doesn't work for all batteries, but I have had very good luck and I have had it work in, I think every case that I have personally tried, I have had it work, um, but the battery after being jumped sometimes is bad and only holds a minute of runtime, and sometimes is good and holds over an hour. So I will show you guys how this works. So up here is my charger move it so you can see the light. The light is right there. And this is a portable charger which can charge ERS-210 and ERS-7 batteries. Open the slot here and I'm going to put this battery in. Light starts off solid. You can just barely see it there and now it's blinking. So now I have to take this out and put it back in. And now it's blinking again, so just have to do it again. And I'm just going to keep doing this over and over again until the light stays green and stops, or stays orange and stops blinking. Since this battery has not been used in some time, I'm thinking if it's going to work, it's going to take a lot of tries.
can probably see from the camera angle, but I am just putting it in and then taking it back out again as soon as the light starts blinking. Sorry if this is boring, I just want to show you guys that you should not give up since this often works after 50 plus tries. The light will blink for a little bit after I pull the battery out and you want to wait until it stops completely to put it back in. I think in the 60s was the most tries I've had it take to get one of these batteries to work. The longer it goes without working, I think the smaller a chance you have of reviving it, but I'd say it's still possible maybe even up to 100 tries or so. <laughs> I think that might have just worked. Let's take a close look here. Yep, that battery's charging. So I don't know yet if it's actually any good, but once it charges up all the way, I'll be able to test it, and there is a chance that this battery could actually run for a significant amount of time and still be a good battery that's not ready to be repacked yet, even though it seemed completely dead when I first got it. Now this trick, um, can pretty much, I know it can be done with the portable charger for both ERS-210 and ERS-31X and ERS-7 batteries. I know it can be done with the stations for the ERS, the sub compartment of the stations for the ERS-110 and 111. I have really high success rates with those batteries. Those tend to hold several hour charges after being jumped. Um, and I have, I've had less success rate with the 3 and 210 series, but I've still had them after being jumped sometimes hold 50 or so minutes of runtime. Max, I think that's the best I've had. Um, but this trick really does work, and you can use it to get a battery that seemed previously dead up and running again. 
and um, I do not know if it works for sure with the 210 stations. They don't seem to always tell me when the battery is too low to charge and sometimes just don't charge it. So I have a harder time um, telling um, how to, when it's done jumping on those, on those, but it might still be possible. I have not tried it with the dongles um, or with the ERS7 stations at all. May be possible, it may not be. I can try it and update you guys later. But it very much works with the portable charger and it very much works with the one series stations. So I will see later if this battery works but this battery is now successfully jumped and successfully charging. And I did not count how many that took, but I think it was around 50 tries. So I hope anyone who has the same problem can use this, and I hope that you guys all get your batteries working again.